Hello, bonjour, Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events, and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English, and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Hello, bonjour, Alberta. I'm your host, Anne Boiteau. And today, we welcome Jean Grandmaitre of Alberta Ballet. And did you know that Alberta Ballet was founded by Ruth Kars in 1958 and became a professional company in 1966? And Jean Grandmaitre joined the Alberta Ballet as the artistic director in 2002 and is known as one of the best, the most successful Canadian choreographer of his generation. So welcome, Jean Grandmaitre. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So let's start a little bit uh, and talk about yourself and where you come from and how you got started in this uh, dance world. Yes, it's a long story. I mean. In, in a way, I started dancing late. I was 16 years old when I told my parents, you know, I'm really, really serious about a career in dance. As a, at the time, was a, as a dancer. Later, it became a choreographer and then artistic director. But at the beginning, it was as a dancer. And I'd seen it on television a little bit, and all these films were coming out, you know, fa flash dance and fame. And, and I wanted to go to the high school for the performing arts in New York. I wanted to, to be an artist. And so, when my parents realized that it was unstoppable, then they encouraged me and they helped me, you know, achieve my dream. But it certainly was a passion that surprised me myself when, because the first time I saw dancers uh, doing classical ballet uh, was on a French television show, Les Beaux Dimanches. Uh, every Sunday night in Quebec, we had this, and it, it showcased opera, ballet, theater. And uh, I never got interested in opera and theater a little bit, but not really. But when I saw the dance, then I knew that this was a real serious passion. And so after that, I never turned back. You know, it was uh, something that uh, I've never regretted to do and uh, an incredible journey in my life. So you, you studied in Ottawa and a bit in Toronto as well? Well, I started training in Ottawa okay. in a small ballet school. And then I went to Toronto. At the York University, they have a very good dance department there. But I knew that to become a ballet dancer, which is what I wanted to do, that was the, of all the art forms, of dance forms, ballet was the one that really, uh, really hypnotized me. You know, it, it was a calling, a serious calling. And, and so I, I told my parents, I need to go to a, the best ballet school, you know, to really train. I, I'm starting late. I have to catch up. So we started in Toronto at York University, and then we realized that I had to go to a more ballet-focused training institution, and I ended up at Les Grands Ballets Canadiens uh, in Montreal with Madame Chérie Aeff, who was still at the school at the time, and I, did, I started my serious training there at the time. And is it there that you discovered that you like choreography? Well, you know, yes, it was actually, when I was training to become a dancer, I was already choreographing. And I was choreographing on my student colleagues and, you know, at the studio in the, at night, on the weekends, whenever I had time and the, there was available room, we'd go in and I'd create dance. And my friends were very nice. They let me experiment and <laughs> try things. And Madame Chériaev, who was the founder, heard about it. And she said, what is that? Is he doing? Is he going to hurt the students? Does he know what he's doing? You know, so she came and watched rehearsals. And she said, whoa, this, he has some talent. You know, we should encourage him to continue. And then I became a professional dancer, but I kept choreographing all the time because it takes, you know, eight to ten years to become a choreographer, to, to have a, a voice that's unique, to know, you know, what you're doing with dancers and how to create 
narrative work or abstract ballet. It's, it's, a, it's a great art form to, to create dance, but it takes years to learn. So I was lucky I started young while I was still in school. So by the time I retired from dance at the age of 32, I'd already been choreographing for almost a decade. So I could start making a living rather quickly doing it. And then came Europe. And then came Europe because it was interesting. I was in, in Montreal working in a restaurant. I, had, I couldn't dance anymore. I had too many injuries. And I was paying my rent as a waiter. And uh, I created a ballet in Toronto for a workshop that was really not that well known. But a famous choreographer came to the performance, saw my ballet. And two weeks later, he was in Italy at La Scala, the famous opera house. And they were looking for a young choreographer. And he said, I just saw this Quebec choreographer in Toronto. He was interesting. You should call him. So I'm, here I am working in my restaurant in Montreal. And I get a, a lunch hour call. And it's my uncle saying, I got a fax from La Scala in Milan. They want to talk to you. And the first call I made was to the artistic director. And she commissioned the ballet. And a year later, I was in Europe. And I started my career. It was like a, a little bit of a Cinderella story. Yeah. And, uh, and so you stayed in Europe for quite a few years? Yes, I was, I think I, it was almost 12 years, you know. I, I had an apartment in Montreal. We were a team of designers in Montreal, set designer, soundtrack, oh, yeah. uh, video designer, costume designer. The, the, we were a team of six. And we had an agent that negotiated our contracts and we started creating ballets all over Europe in, you know, some of the most famous opera houses. We were very fortunate. We went to Paris, we went to Milan, of course, and then we went to Oslo, Munich, and Stuttgart. And so it was an extraordinary decade of creating ballets with some of the best dancers in the world, yes. with no uh, budget limitation. You know, in Europe at the time, you could do almost anything you could dream of. And so it was a, a, a year, a decade of learning my craft and working in sometimes difficult circumstances, but usually, you know, really memorable and uh, inspiring. Uh, events that were there. I, I'll never forget those years. Mm -hmm. And then you heard about an opening here in Canada? Yes, well after, I think it was in 1999, I did I think seven ballets in six different countries. Wow. And I burned out. It was a burnout. And I took a year sabbatical, you know, to replenish. And uh, I got a grant from the Quebec government at the time and I got to live in Rome for a year. And, and, and study and you know, rethink what I wanted to do artistically. And it was at that time that I said I need a new challenge. And artistic direction was it. You know, all my friends always said to me, you know, every great choreographer has their company. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a, laboratoire, a laboratory for a scientist. Yes. Your place, you know the dancers, they know your work, you can go deeper in your ideas that way. And, and so uh, I'd been listening to those comments and I said maybe it's time to, to, to apply for artistic directorship. And at the time, Alberta Ballet was looking for a new artistic director. And it's very rare. These positions in Canada at least open every 10 to 15, 20 years. You know, so it was serendipity that I arrived at that time. Uh, and I applied and I did all the interviews and with the career I'd had in Europe, uh, it was very helpful. And so I got the job and moved to Calgary uh, in 2002. So how do you start as an artistic director? How do you start? Yes, what, well, that's what, a good question. Do you start <laughs> by, um, by with the dancers? Do you start with the um, talking to the board? Is it, uh, you know, how do you start? Like this was I, your you, first they job? They throw you in the job. You know, <laughs> they, there's no school okay. that trains artistic directors. No, way. no school. I knew, you know, from all the choreography I'd done that I'd been used to working with orchestras, with uh, wardrobe departments, you know, technical departments. I'd been used to working with designers, budgets, casting, coaching, choreographing. So I'd done a lot of production. So that was not, I wasn't worried about the artistic part of it. I knew I could run a company and we could have ideas and work collaboratively with many artists and create something. Uh, I knew I had a vision, you know, I had a passion for dance. I was more weak in the accounting side of things, all the business aspects, working with the board of directors, working with mm -hmm. really a community in fundraising because you spend half your time fundraising when you're an artistic director. So it, that whole aspect of it I didn't know and I had no training for. 
So you, you learn, on, you hit the ground running, you know, and when I arrived at Alberta Valley, there was a deficit and we got rid of it in one year, but it was a bit of a scary time for the company. You know, the, the past artistic director had done a fantastic job building the company, but he left the company in a deficit and it was demoralized a bit. Yeah. So I had to rebuild the energy in the company and, and relaunch it in a way. And I had a good team, good people, good dancers, good designers, a lot of help from the community, and it took off. And, um, and I think you learn as you go, you know, and, and you learn how to work with the board of directors. And it's really about trying to take everybody by the hand and bringing them towards one vision, you know, towards yes. one place where did we want this company to go and what we want the company to begin, uh, building a real soul for itself. So it's, 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 it's about taking people and bringing them there. So talk to us a little bit about uh, a couple of uh, productions that are close to your heart that you really, really well, love. Well, you know, it's, it's, there's many productions that are very close to my heart. I think what the closest is to realize that we, in our repertoire we have to do a little bit of everything now to survive and also the dancers want to do it. They want to do Swan Lake, then they want to do a ballet to uh, Elton John, then they want to do uh, really avant-garde work. So they're very open-minded. So we realized that you know the survival really depended on, on the, the variety in the repertoire. Some big ballets bring families, some you know is adult narrative like Shakespeare for example yes. or Carmen. So in the end, you know, there's people I commission work from and there's ballets I create. My own personal favorites was, is, is really the Joni Mitchell creation, the one that launched the portrait series. Later we yes. worked with Elton John and then we worked with Sarah McLaughlin and the, the, the wonderful Katie Lang. But Joni Mitchell was the ballet that launched it all and she collaborated with us for almost two years. So it was an extraordinary moment in my life. She's a genius and a, a great news and she changed my perception of everything how to create dance how to you know be truthful to your vision as an artist and and so that ballet changed me and, and changed the Alberta Ballet it really put us on the map internationally people came from the BBC from the New York Times it everybody sure wanted to know about the Joni Mitchell Ballet so I think that one is a memorable one Another memorable production was Swan Lake. The first time we did Swan Lake two years ago, after 48 years of history, we finally tried to dance the most difficult ballet of them all. Yes. And it was a big triumph, big success for the company. And Kirk Peterson staged that. So it was a commissioned choreographer. And then that way, that's another proud moment. So there, you know, you, you have a lot of those moments that keep you going because it's so challenging to be in the arts that it the is. triumphs on stage make it all worthwhile. <laughs> Tell us in about a minute Yes, what's minute. coming next year. Well, you know, we want to keep doing the great classics. We want to do the avant-garde work. Next year, I know we're going to be very lucky. We're going to have a lot of Canadian choreographers. That's something I'm very proud of. So I'm going to be fe featured with some of my work to Elton John mm -hmm. and Katie Lang. Um, we're going to be performing Romeo and Juliet, the great uh, neoclassical masterpiece, one of the great ballets of the 20th century. And then we're bringing back um, three Western Canadian choreographers, Azur Barton, Wenwei Wang, and Yukichi Atori, to create an evening of Western Canadian choreographers of contemporary dance. Ooh. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. We have guest companies like Paul Taylor coming to do a very famous tango ballet. Uh, and, nice. and the Shaping Sound is coming as well. They're all the So You Think You Can Dance finalists yeah. and winners. They do a company and they tour the world. Yes. And they'll be part of our season as well. So there's a little bit of something Ooh. for everyone there. Interesting. Yeah. Discover the dance that way because you see how rich it is as an art form. Well, Jean Grandmaitre, it was a pleasure to have you on our show tonight. And for all of you out there, please stay tuned as we continue en français.